Blog Talk Radio. All praises to the Most High. All praises to the Most High. We give him the glory, the honor, and the praise for another day that he has blessed us with to be alive and clothed in our right minds to get into his word, to understand more of his word. And thank you all for tuning in, all of you that has been connected and joining in and tuning into the broadcast. Today's topic is we're going to be talking about the hidden one, the hidden one. The Lord has a certain chosen race of people who are his elect and precious jury from the tribe of Judah and Israel. And if you are so-called black, so-called Latino, Latino and so-called Native American, you are the hidden ones, the hidden ones of the Most High. So let's look into Scripture. We're going to look into Scripture and see the Most High's purpose, plan, and promises for us. And just why we are called the hidden ones. It's a reason that we are called the hidden ones. And um, we just praise the Most High today. The Most High is moving by his power in the earth, and he is waking up his hidden ones. He is bringing us forth, and that's just a matter of a fact. It's time for the most high's hidden ones to arise, to arise with power. And the scripture says that the tents of Judah is going to rise first. And the tents of Judah are the so-called Negroes. We are the Hebrews. We are the hidden ones of the Most High. And so in this time, in this hour, in this dispensation, this age, this is what the Most High is doing. And there's nothing anyone can do about it because they will find themselves fighting against the Lord. We are the hidden ones of the Most High, and we are rising to the power because that's what he said. He promised it, and, and, and not only, you know, we know that the Most High has promised this. This is, this is just a promise that he has set, set forth and will not delay it. He will not prolong it any longer. And we are not the only ones that know we are the hidden ones. A lot of heathen nations know that we are the hidden ones. Uh, you have a lot of scholars in, in uh, Christianity, systematic theology that know we are the hidden ones. But they choose to ignore it. They choose to uh, go on teaching about other subjects, educating students about other subjects, rather than uh, teaching the truth of who we are. Yes the jewel of the Most High, the jewel. So we want to begin in Psalms chapter 83. You have your Bibles. This is the Tanya Bible to Psalms chapter 83, 83 division of Psalms. And let's start, we can start at verse 1. And it says, keep not thy silence, O God. Hold not thy peace, and be not still, O God. Yahweh, Yahweh, be not thy still, O Yahweh. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult. You want to stop right there and break that down a little bit, because we're going to go to other precepts that just going to... Uh, give us the understanding of this. And really our whole lives as Hebrew Israelites are uh, the precepts of the scripture. We are living epistles of the scripture because we have endured and we have um, experienced the tumult from our enemies here in America. And, of course, those that are scattered abroad throughout the four corners of the earth have experienced the tumult the tumult is a, 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 a secret conspiracy 
against us. Now, given the fact that our ancestors were uh, uh, disobedient to the Most High that brought about this captivity, um, you know, but we read in the scripture the other day where our enemies, the Most High's enemies, has forward his affliction. Because you can punish someone or you can take someone into bondage or slavery, uh, but when you start mistreating them beyond what the Most High says, then that forwards his affliction. And so this tumult is a it, 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 it's it's a it, it's a, a, a loud confusion from the enemy, a, a, a loud confusion of disorder, disarray, turmoil, uproar. For lo, thy enemies make a tumult. They that hate thee, see. They that hate these, talking about the most high, they hate the Lord, have lifted up the head. Mm -hmm. Like Satan with his horns. Verse 3 says, they have taken crafty counsel. Crafty counsel? Yeah. Pretty much what you see in the United Nations where we are not even included, our nation. Now, you may get one or two coons sitting up in there that don't have much power to speak on anything and can't really make any uh, firm decisions to help our nation or implement laws or constitutional laws and, uh, for our nation, particularly our nation, as Hebrew Israelites so-called black people, so-called Latinos, so-called Native Americans. But we know that we're Israel, we are Judah. And uh, so let's go a little further here. Again, verse 3, they have taken crafty counsel against thy people. Thy people, the most high people. And consulted, consulted together, coming together in meetings, behind board meetings, uh, you know, talking about how they can keep our nation in bondage, how that they can destroy our nation through the infer, uh structure or the infer, you know, uh, of drugs, of diseases, of poverty, the infantry, of the malicious dealings with each other coming together to wipe out our nation, pretty much what's going on now to try to get us to fall up under their uh, scheme and put fear in us of what's going on in America right now, right now. They consulted. They want to come together to try to consult because, see, people that are rich in the world, in the world with the world goods, and they are ungodly, they're wicked, evil. They don't have no regards for uh, the the underprivileged or the poor or anybody, not even in their own nation do they care about them. They don't have no heart. You can't make people have a heart for you. So they come together and consult against thy hidden one. The Hidden ones. So that's what we're talking about today. Who are these people that have come together to consult against the Most High's hidden ones? We are. We are. We're the hidden ones. We're going to understand why we're the hidden ones. And when you're hid, you're hid. And the Most High have told us in Scripture that our souls are hid in him. We are hid in the Most High. He has to hide us in the secret place of his pavilion so that the enemy can't touch us. That's why we have to stay in the grip of the Most High, in the word, 
in the spirit, walk with them. Fellowship one to another because we are the heathen ones. We don't mingle in the world with heathens. We have no parts with heathens. We are separate holy people called out, chosen for the most high. We 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 are peculiar people. Our nation should congregate with one another. And perhaps those that are cleaving to the house of Jacob that have a pure heart before the Most High. You know, only the Most High can determine that and give us wisdom to have discernment if they are really cleaving. Have to make sure that they're really cleaving from a biblical perspective, that they understand who we are, that they respect the Most High's word concerning us and who we are. That's why he said that the tents of Judah would rise first so that the house of Israel would not magnify themselves over or against the house of Judah because we have that power. The house of Judah is the lion of Judah because Yahweh came through the loans of Judah. So these people, these people that we're going to see here and uh the following verses are the ones that have consulted together against us. It's always been a conspiracy against the Most High's people. It's nothing new. So our ancestors were in slavery. Now, they have said, I mean, verse 4, if you're just not tuning in, thank you for tuning in to the broadcast. We're in Psalm chapter 80, 83, verse 4. Psalms 83, verse 4 now, they have said, come, let us cut them off from being a nation. So if you look at our nation now as a people, as a race of people, Negroes, so-called Negroes, and um, so-called Latinos and Native Americans, so-called, we're scattered. We're scattered. And just about every... um, other nation that's established as, as a nation, they, they have their own government. We don't have our own um, government. Now, granted, we are a nation, and that's what the Most High is doing now in these last days, waking us up to come together as a nation because this is, that is when he's going to really come back, come down, move more swiftly against our enemies. That's why he's waking us up. I'm living proof of that. And many of our Hebrew Israelite brothers and sisters are living proof of that as well, that the Most High is waking us up. Many people have came out of Christianity suddenly, swiftly. Their spirit just moved them away from Christianity to be enlightened. See, these are the scriptures that they have not taught us while we were in the infrastructure of the church in Christianity. These are the scriptures you you knew nothing about. You might have read the whole Bible, you read it, okay, you just you, you just didn't really know who is these scriptures talking about, other than you relating it to uh, spiritual Israel, as we have always been taught in systematic theology, that we are the spiritual church. So when we are being taught like that, it's it's just hard for us to know who we are. So that's why the Most High have to raise up people to put the word out there to let our people know that we are Judah, especially our nation, because our nations were the ones more than any other race of people being gunned down with police brutality, being, um, you know, prejudiced upon with racism, held back from jobs and opportunities that really belong to us. Fighting, fighting, fighting in America, fighting in this country. But one thing I realized about the Most High, the more we suffer, the more we go through, the more powerful we are. 
because without persecution, we won't you won't really move like we should. Persecution and going through the fire, it it it, it put the fire in us to spread the gospel, to wake up our nation. So people think they can do things to you and you're just going to be in a corner crying somewhere. It's really just furthering the gospel. It's really just giving us the power to wake up more of our nation. Because without our nation, you know, being woke now that we're the hidden ones and the Most High is waking us up now, they will be caught. You're going to be caught up with the enemy. You're going to be caught up with those that the Most High has already deemed evil. Verse 5, it says, again, they have consulted together with one consent. One consent. They all agreed. Whoever these people are of these other nations that have come together to consult with one another, they all have agreed to do this to our nation. That's why many of these um, heathens, you know, nations, they have planted their stores in our community, you know, giving access easy to alcohol, to drugs, paraphernalia, the elements of the world. They planted it in our communities because they want to, you know, uh, get our nation hooked on drugs, Get our nation hooked on alcohol, you know, uh, even in Christianity, a church on every corner, not even teaching this doctrine, not even teaching the word, not even teaching them who they are, not even letting them know they're the hidden ones, not even letting them know that they're Hebrew Israelites, not even letting them know that they're the Jews, the Jews of the Bible, years and years and years and years. Blind. Blind. Yeah, for they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate. So you get this word confederate, you know, that's why we have this confederate flag in America. Because they like this confederate, the confederacy against us. And when you get confederate, a confederate, a confederate against uh, anybody. It, it, you know that means that they have uh, sided together to capitalize on a certain race of people. They want to capitalize on us. They want to make merchandise of us. by joining together in an agreement or like a treaty. They want to do it secretly or illegally. They work together. There's nothing good can come out of confederate confederacy. We don't need that. We don't need nothing confederate over our nation. We just don't. You know, people take pride in that confederate flag because their hearts are evil. That's what they want to do. And they have been taught that for centuries, for years. So it's just like if I've been raised a certain way, you're raised to believe what your parents taught you until you come into the knowledge of the truth for yourself. So those that have been raised under the confederate, the confederacy of their belief in their belief system, okay, well, that's what they're going to raise up to want to be. Their parents or whoever raised them has raised them to have this uh, vicious hate towards another race of people, not knowing that you're hating the very people that the Most High have chosen and love. You're hating the very people that are Jews. You're hating the very people that are Hebrew Israelites. The whole world has been deceived for who we are. But see, this is a critical time that even the heathen nations need to wake up. Not only our nation need to wake up, but the heathen nations need to wake up because you can very much be caught in the Most High's wrath. He has a wrath that is to come 
for the heathen nation. You will be caught up. That's why he said in the scripture, come out from them. That if we didn't come out from them, that we would be thrusted, thrusted through with them. Because when he comes back, he's coming with a vengeance blow, a vengeance. And that's in Isaiah chapter 13, verse 15. Isaiah chapter 13, verse 15 says, everyone that is found shall be thrusted through, and everyone that is joined unto them shall fall by the sword. This is talking about being caught with the heathen. Let's look in verse 14. Let's go back a little bit. It says, and it shall be as a chaste roll and as a sheep that no man taketh up. They shall every man turn to his own people and flee everyone into his own land. That's what's coming. That's what's coming. That's why our nation is waking up, turning to our own people and flee everyone into his own land because the judgment that the Most High is about to pull out. If you look at verse 13, it says, Therefore will I shake the heavens and the earth shall remove out of her place in the wrath of the Lord of hosts in the day of his fierce anger. Then we go to verse 14. So we already seen what he said. He's going to shake the heavens and remove her out of her place, shake the earth and remove the earth out of her place in the wrath of the Lord of hosts. And in that day, in the day of his fierce anger, Verse 14 says, and it shall be as a chaste robe and as a sheep that no man taketh up. They shall every man turn to his own people and flee everyone to his own land. That's what we're doing now because we already know America and the other heathen nations, they have plotted, you, you know, the elite up there, whatever is going on with the policies of the political diplomatic policies. We already know that they're just a plan. Could the Most High be using it all for his glory? Sure he can. Sure he can be using these other nations that swore against our enemies here in America. Because the revelation talks about, you know, they're going to turn against them. And even the book of Obadiah talks about that. But in verse 15 of Isaiah, I'm sorry, verse 13 in Isaiah, let me slow it down. Isaiah chapter 13, and in verse 15, it says, Everyone that is found shall be thrusted through. Yeah, this is coming. And everyone that is joined unto them shall fall by the sword. So if you're joined unto the enemies of the Most High, you want to be thrust it through and fall by them. Because the Most High is coming. He's coming with the vengeance blow. You can continue to read to verse 16. He's giving great details of how his fierce, fierce anger is going to be upon their children and dash them into pieces before their eyes. The houses shall be spoiled and their wives ravaged. It just goes on and on. So it behooves the heathen nation that if it had any way uh, the slightest wisdom to fear the Lord, the slightest wisdom to understand these scriptures, it will behoove you to get your heart right and cleave to the house of Jacob, Judah. Perhaps you may be able to escape the sword. But now we go back again into Psalm chapter 83. Uh, <clears throat> verse 5 again says, For they have consulted together with one consent, they have confederated against thee. Mm-hmm. See, one thing about the Most High, he'll allow our enemies to the adversaries of Israel and Jacob, Judah, to rise against us for his purpose, just like he did in the days of, with the Amorites, uh, with Babylon and the Syrians, and then he said that I will destroy them. 
That doesn't mean because the Most High allowed the adversary to rise up against our nation that he's just going to let them just get away. He uses them. We're going to see that in Scripture. He uses the evil for his wrath to punish, to correct, to chastise. He does all that. But then in the end, he turns around and destroys them because he has to destroy wickedness. So in verse 6, he goes on to say, who are these people that coming together in an angry gathering a tumult against us? Who's first? The tabernacle of Edom. The tabernacle of Edom. And see, we have to deal with Edom because that is who we mostly deal with here in America. The tabernacle of Edom. The tabernacle of Edom. We want to look at another scripture here. Because the Most High is um, bringing his word to pass. And he's given... um, our nation. He's given our nation the power to rise up. So Edom is first. Edom here is first. Bear with me here. Oh, you know, we'll get more scriptures here to Go forth a little bit more into what the Most High is saying here. So Edom is first here. Edom are the Caucasian, which is Esau. And Edom means wasted away. Wasted away. And that is a very scary thing. I mean, your heart has to be so humble in order to cleave to the house of Judah. You just got to be like so lowly in order to escape the wrath that is to come upon you. The Ishmaelites. Those that are in over there near Afghanistan, Moab, the Chinese people. We know they came together against us in the Hagarian, Gebel, and Ammon, the Amalite, Philistines, with the inhabitants of Tyre, Ashur, Asher, also is joined with them. They have hope in the children of Lot, Selah. Verse 9 says, do unto them as unto the Midianites. As to Caesarea, yeah, we know about that, the book of Judges. As to Jabin, mm-hmm, Jabin handled that. Yeah, Jabin handled that at the brook of Kishon. Verse 10 says, which perish at Endor. They became as dunge for the earth. Scriptures are alive, the scriptures are still active and powerful. It says in verse 11, make their nobles like Orb and like Zeb, Zeb, yea, all their princes as Zeba and as the Zelmina. Verse 12 says, who said, let us take ourselves the house of God? Let us take to ourselves the house of God in possession. Mm. This is what they said that they would do. And this is history. Now, there may be some people that may not like what I'm getting ready to say, but it's history. You can't erase history. So when we talk about different figures in history, it doesn't mean that we condone what they did. But it's history of 
the quotes that they said. I'm going to read a quote here from Adolf Hitler, which he has another name. I I know his name is um, Eichenbergers or something like that. But anyway, he said, America has stolen the Jews, the Jews of God, his jury, the Negroes. They are the true Hebrews. This is what Hitler said. So when we get the scripture right here in Psalm 18 and 12, where they said, let us take to ourselves the houses of God in possession. Mm -hmm. The hidden ones. We've always been the hidden ones. If you think about... um, you think about what uh, Pharaoh, you think about what Pharaoh um, uh, commanded the midwives to do and um, slaying the newborn male, slaying the newborn male. That are born. We're going to come back to Psalms right now because these, these are our key scriptures in Psalm chapter 83. But let's go to Exodus. Let's go back to Exodus because we want to see how we are the hidden ones and how we have always been a target because we are the hidden ones. We've always been a uh, special people where people wanted to try to wipe us out. Even some people in our own nation, the Pharisees and Sadducees. See, the Most High knows those that belong to him. Um, he knows those that have been preyed upon. Mm-hmm. Now, let's look here in Exodus chapter 1, start here in verse 6, because after Joseph um, passed on and was off the scene, verse 6 says, and Joseph died and all his brethren in all that generation. There was a new generation coming on up, and it says in verse 7, and the children of Israel were fruitful. We were blessed. We were fruitful, fruitful in everything, fruitful in, you know, multiplying, being fruitful and multiplying children because our nation has always been blessed. Our nation is always blessed. And people have always tried to curse us, with like Baal and Balak, you know, but they couldn't curse us. Balaam, excuse me. But they couldn't curse us. So again, Exodus chapter 1, verse 7, and the children of Israel were fruitful and increased abundantly, abundantly, and multiplied, and waxed exceedingly mighty. That's what people see about our nation today, especially our Hebrew men. And people want to say they you know, scared our Hebrew men or our Hebrew men violence because you see the strength. The heathen nations see the strength of our Hebrew men. And if you get these other nations with their ego, they don't want to hear that. They don't want to hear that our Hebrew men are very strong, powerful men, a force to be reckoned with. You have to accept that. You have to accept what the Most High has given each each nation now, there are uh, blessings that the Most High bestowed on some of the heathen, just like with Esau, given the dew of the earth. They have that with the uh, lust of the luxury of the earth. So you have the dew of the earth, so accept your blessing. But as far as the Hebrew Israelite, Jacob, Judah, the line of Judah, the Most High said Israel was fruitful and increase abundantly and multiplying and wax exceeding mighty and the land was filled with them. That's why we multiply. We multiply. Now there rose up a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph, because see the king during Joseph time, the Pharaoh during Joseph time, 
you know, respected him, regarded him, and promoted him to be second in command over Egypt. So, but after he died, okay, and years and years and years went by, a lot of years went by, okay, people wasn't really familiar with how that pharaoh or disregarded how that pharaoh uh, respected Joseph and his people. Okay, let's read verse 8 again. Just start to tune in in Exodus chapter 1, verse 8. Now there, chapter 1, verse 8. Now there arose up a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. Okay, so it's saying they didn't know Joseph. Verse 9, and he said unto his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. That's what's going on in America. They say the same thing. That they, that we are more and mightier than them. So what happens when a people feel a person or a nation of people is more and mightier than them? They feel inferior. So they say, come on, let us deal wisely with them. Lest they multiply and it comes to pass that when their thoughts Falleth out any war, they join also unto our enemies and fight against us, and so get them up out of the land. So they were thinking that, you know, Israel, the Hebrew Israelites, would join with the enemies against them since we were mightier and multiply more exceedingly and wax mightier than them, that we would join, our nation would join with the enemies and fight against them and win the battle. So they want to get us up, you know, put us in bondage more. So get them up out of the land. Verse 11 says, therefore they did set over them cash masters to afflict them in their burden. That's what we see today. That's what we see today. They set task masters over us to afflict us. You go take you go to the municipal buildings to take care of buildings or you know do an exchange. The taskmasters that set over us give us a hard time. It's been passed down in that wicked generation for years and years what to do with these people, how to treat them. But see, the Most High knows how to break the back of pride. He knows how to break the back of pride. That's why in the battles of Jehoshaphat, he said, you need not fight in this battle. For this battle do not belong to you, it belongs to the Lord. Verse 11 again. Therefore, they did set over them taskmasters to afflict them with their burdens. For Pharaoh, treasure cities, Python, and Ramses. That's what we did with America, our nation. A nation built America. So called Negroes, so called Latinos, so called Native Americans, we built America. We've been here. All this belongs to our people. We built it. Our nation. Our ancestors. Our ancestors. But to go back again, to the curses of Deuteronomy 28 for the disobedience of our ancestors that we will build where we will not live in the houses. We will, you know, plant but not eat the fruit of it because of disobedience. So this is why it's important. I'm rightly, you know, I have to rightly divide the word of truth even in teaching this because when our nation get back to keeping the law, statutes, and commandments, that's when we will see the change in the blessings and the prosperity of our people because in this obedience, you're still going to be in bondage. But the, you, you're going to be blessed if you do the commandments of the Most High, keep his laws. As the book of Judith and the Apocrypha say, if they sin not against their God, you can't do nothing to them. You cannot overpower them. You cannot overthrow our nation when we are being obedient to the Most High. There is no weapon that is formed against us shall prosper because we are the righteousness of the Lord. 
We're blessed of the Lord when we keep his law, statutes, and commandments. But for a time, as the Most High had told Abraham, your people will go into 400 years of bondage, the children of Israel. And that has happened. The 400 years has lapsed in De- with Deuteronomy 2868 again. It says again, again, the Israelites will go into Egypt, which is a derivative of bondage, again for 400 years. So that 400 years will, you know, we determining from coming over here on the transatlantic slave trade ships, 1619 to 2019, that's 400 years. So, of course, the Most High is moving swiftly, swiftly, swiftly. There's some things that happened in 2019 that I can't even talk about on this broadcast for me to know that the Most High is moving swiftly and he has brought us up, bringing us up out of bondage again to get back to the law, statutes, and commandments more than we ever did, more than what Christianity has taught us, which they hardly and rarely taught about the commandments. You don't hear the commandments teaching a lot in the Christianity. So, but the word of the Lord is going to come forth because even when the Most High told Abraham that your people will be in bondage in Egypt for 400 years until the Amorite iniquities are filled, are full. That means it's a certain time that the Most High is going to allow his people to be in bondage. And then when the iniquities of the Amorites are filled, that's when he's going to come and uh, bring judgment upon the enemies and the adversaries of Israel. So, And they built for Pharaoh treasure cities, Python and Ramses. Yeah, the White House. Capital, all those buildings were built by our ancestors. Granted, with being in slavery and bondage, and even our nation being architects and builders, you know, that's why a lot of our nation, they're, they're very gifted. Our nation are very gifted. We have skills. A lot of these nations didn't have the skills and the uh intellect, the intelligence to build a lot of things. Our nation has created and uh, so many, so many things, so many electrical, um, have electric, electrical witty inventions, inventions, carpentry, mathematics, skills, why Yahweh Shai was the son of a carpenter. We've always had those gifts inside of us. Verse 12 says, but the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied. Mm-hmm. I said that in the beginning of the broadcast. The more you afflict our nation, the more we multiply and grew. The more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. Mm-hmm. That's the most high. And they were grieved because of the children of Israel. That's why in here in America, with all of the racism and all of the mistreatment and all of the, the police brutality and everything going on, they are grieved of who we are. You can't change the most high's people. You can't change anything of who we are. They are grieved. They are grieved. They do everything they can to hold us back. They do they do everything they can to show us they hate us. They even all on social media, all, you know, the World Wide Web, all in the 5G, the 4G, the whatever G, they just everywhere. Sending subliminal languages to let you know how much they still hate our nation. But that's not going to change our bloodline. That can't change our bloodline. We are still who the Most High say we are. It's never going to change. You have to get with it or quit it. Get with who we are or quit what you're doing. Both. And the Egyptian made the children of Israel to serve with rigor. Rigor. Mm -hmm. That's why with the Latino nation, 
you know, being Issachar and Ephraim and all of the other, the, the northern nation, you know, um, Issachar, you know, being, I think it was his father said that, you know, they would love to work and labor hard. Let's just put it like that. You can find what Jacob said uh, in his last words to each one of his, you know, sons in the final hour of his death. But that donkey that that represent their nation represent how hard they love to work. And um, our nation as well love to work. Love to build, you know. Now, uh, we don't like no one ruling over us. We don't like no one being master over us, over us. But we like to work. We like to have our own. So you look in Genesis chapter 30, verse 18, it says, well, that's not the one we want to go to. We want to look and see. uh, I don't want to take too much time here. But it's just good to to, just to look at it. Just look at it for a minute. Because even though the Egyptian made the children of Israel to serve with rigor. Um, it's a part of our nature, nature to work. It's a part of our nature to love to work. Mm-hmm. And um, let's look here. If I don't get it this time, I don't want to take up too much time on the broadcast um, looking for it. But if you look, yep, go to uh, Genesis chapter 49. And when you read these, you will see the last words that Jacob told his son. Mm -hmm. Because our nation it's a cause of strong ass crouching between two burdens. Crouching between two burdens. And I think even his mother, Leah, said, God has given me my hire. Mm hmm. But let's stay on track here. Let's go to, and that was in, let's see. Give me a second here. Thank you all for your patience because we have time. We have time on the uh, broadcast. I have time on the broadcast. And let's go to all right, we're back in Exodus chapter one still and verse thirteen, we finish off that Egyptian made the children of Israel to serve with rigor. With rigor. Verse 14 said, and they made their lives bitter with hard bondage. That's what America have done. That's what America have done. They made our lives bitter with hard bondage, a lot of our ancestors. Now, that's why it's important to have your own business. Some type, some type of way, pray that the Most High give you uh, the, the mind, the will, um, the intelligence, the know-how to create and have your own business. 
So you don't have to work for anyone. You may have to deal with, you know, the heathen nations out there and take care of paperwork or whatever, but you have your own business. And I'm a business owner, small business owner right now. Just a business owner, let's just say that, you know, these terminology or whatever. But just to have your your own entrepreneurship, that is a blessing to be an entrepreneur, to have some type of flow of income assets that you, you have created with your own hands, that you don't have to go on these jobs and keep slaving in hard, bitter bondage on these jobs. It, there has to be a way. The Most High has always made a way, always made a way. So I kind of found what I was looking for as it relates to Issachar, and it's a car name, of course, meaning higher. Hired man. Yeah. The Latinas love to work. They work all day and all night. But the difference is, you know, slaving for your enemies, slaving for those that the Most High has deemed his enemies. It's a car meaning hired man. That is what his, his, his name means. That's what we have named him. But back here in Exodus chapter 14 again, and they made their lives bitter with hard bondage. We're talking about the hidden ones if you're just not tuning in. We're the hidden ones. Because even while we're reading these scriptures, we're going to get to it with the midwives. Even Moses' mother had to hide him. All of the Most High's chosen people his elect had to be hidden in some kind of way. We're the hidden ones. Special, called out people, chosen elect of of the most high Yahweh. They made their lives bitter with hard bondage in martyr and in brick and in all manner of service in the field. In the field. All their service wherein they made them serve was with rigor. It just going on and on telling about how our ancestors were put on a heavy burden with rigorous work, rigorous labor. Verse 15 says, And the king of Egypt back to the Hebrew midwives. Okay, you had to get somebody to put an end to this, stop this, you know. They even went to when the children were going to be burst out to try to stop our nation. King of Egypt back unto the Hebrew midwives, of which the name of one was Sapphire. If you can pronounce that, it's probably another terminology. Sifra. Sifra. I want to get the right pronunciation of that. Bear with me here. Because these are very important people. When the Most High give a name in Scripture, they are very important people. Mm -hmm. Very important people to the Most High. Because if it wasn't for uh, the names that the Most High is given here, our nation will be destroyed. So when the Most High give a name, he's giving a name because this is a very important person. All right, give me a second here. I want to be able to pronounce this the right way. But she was the one. She was the one where the Most High had to use to save us. Okay, just give me a second here. So we can say Sifra. We had a close there. It was close. Sifra. Break the syllables down. But she was a very important person in these scriptures. Sifra. And the name of the other one, Pua. So, verse 16, and he said, when you do the office of a midwife to the Hebrew women, and see them upon the stool, if it be a son, then ye shall kill him. Look at this. 
Look at this. We want to go to the New Testament because uh, Herod, the Tatachers, put out another decree for the children even during that time. They really was trying to destroy our nation. It's always been like that because we the hidden ones. And that's why our nation, our Hebrew men, our Hebrew women, we should feel so blessed and special that we are sought out people. We are a sought out people. Call of God, called of the Most High, called of Yahweh, called out, special. We don't have to be ashamed, feel no kind of way about who we are in a negative way. We are blessed, highly favored of the Most High, called out, especially when we're walking in obedience to him, representing him, letting his light shine through us because we have a power on the inside. He's given us that. So here it is. Pharaoh was saying, if it be a son, then you shall kill him. But if it be a daughter, then you shall let him, you shall, then shall she live. Why is that? Why let the women live? Why let the women live? When we are the very rock of our Hebrew, of our Hebrew men, of our Hebrew nation. As far as the most high letting us be that proverbial wife, the woman that he'll use like Deborah, Judith, Esther, we have power and skills as well, so it doesn't matter. So we want to kill off our Hebrew men, but let the Hebrew women live, Hebrew babies live. Verse 16 said, and he said, okay, we already read that. Verse 17, but the midwives feared God. They feared Yahweh. That's why their names are important. That's why their names are included. They feared the Most High. You're just tuning in. We're talking about the hidden ones. The hidden ones from Psalms chapter 83. The hidden ones. We've always been the hidden ones. But the midwives feared God and did not as the king of Egypt commanded them. Yes, they're not going to do that. And granted, these were not women that was going to disobey God by fearing this, this, this king. But save the men children alive. The midwives saved the Hebrew men children alive. And the king of Egypt called the midwives and said unto them, why have you done this thing and have saved the men children alive? So, you know, the Most High had to give him wisdom to lie to this king, lie to this fool. You got to lie to a fool. Most High granted for it to you to do it. You got a fool, a fool that's trying to kill you or your nation, a fool. Who wouldn't use wisdom with a fool? You think the most high not gonna give people wisdom with a fool? So the midwife said unto Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women are not as Egyptian women, for they are lively and are delivered ere the midwives come in unto them. Like as soon as we go into them, they're giving birth. Which is, you know, what the Most High gave her to say. Let's just say it like that. It's what the Most High gave her to say. And some of I do the women do birth fast. I've had eight and birth some of them fast. Therefore, Yahweh dealt well with the midwives who multiplied and waxed very mighty. Yeah. And it came to pass because the midwives feared Yahweh that he made them houses. These were heathens. But you, this is this is like I'm saying, if you do right by the Most High as a heathen, you can cleave to the house of Jacob. You can cleave to the house of Israel. You can be blessed of the Most High. Mm-hmm. But you got to be humble and you got to be obedient. And I know maybe some heathens are tuning in. It's a lesson for you, for you heathen men and women. It's a lesson for you. This is what the Most High is showing you and telling you. 
because you're not going to be able to destroy our nation. As they say, you can't beat them, you might as well join them, because the Most High's will is going to be done. And it came to pass, verse 21, and it came to pass because the midwives feared Yahweh, that he made them houses. And Pharaoh charged all his people, saying, every son that is born you shall cast into the river, and every daughter you shall save alive. I have a little compassion on the Hebrew women, Hebrew babies, the, the girls. But that doesn't matter because we love our entire nation. And when you harm one of us, you're harming all of us. So we don't take great delight that he had a little compassion or whatever he was thinking to keep the midwives, um, let the midwives keep alive the daughters. And even after that didn't work what he wanted to do with the midwives, for the most high blessed them for their obedience. He just is saying now, every son that is born, you should cast into the river. And every daughter you shall save alive. Now, this is what Moses come on the scene. We're going to stop right there and go back to Psalms 83 now because I just wanted you to see how the hidden ones have always been plot against. And we know that uh, Moses, we know the story of Moses. That was doing his, you know, his mother, of course, hiding him in a basket because of the decree that Pharaoh said, cast them into the water, everyone you find. All the ones that are born, because you couldn't stop the birth. Because the midwife just, you know, covered that. Most high had her to cover that. So now they said, when they're all born, just cast them into the water. These are evil people. So Moses' mother had wisdom to put him in a basket because she saw that he was a goodly child. He, he was a special child. And, in fact, he was because the Most High was going to raise that child up to do what he called him to do. And surely Moses did. And he raised up in the house of the Egyptians and experiencing all of the luxury of everything that they could offer him. But then when he got grown, he rather had suffered the reproach with his people than enjoy the pleasure of sin for a season with the Egyptians. Now, we'll be back here in Psalm chapter 83. We want to hasten along. may have to do a part two because I um, just don't want to never rush the word of the Lord. So we get here in chap- Psalm chapter 83. And uh, we went through the names of who these people that's confederate against the most highest hidden ones. We went through them and Edom is the first. Edom is the first. So this is the song of Asaph. So we get here, verse 12, we read this part, who said, let us take ourselves the house of God in possession. Yeah, we are the most high temple. They wanted to take over the house of God. They wanted to be us, if, if you say. Verse 13 says, Oh my God, Yahweh. Oh my Yahweh. Make them like a wheel before the wind. It's praying against them. As, a fi- as the fire burneth the wood, and as the flame setteth the mountain on fire. So persecute them with thy tempest. This is our prayer. This is what we have to pray against the heathen nations of that are our enemies. If they don't relent, if they don't humble themselves, who say you can't pray these prayers that Yahweh will hear us and deliver us against our enemies that are too strong for us, as one psalm says. The psalmist said that, I believe it was David, deliver me from those that are too strong for me. There are enemies that are too strong for us to handle within our own strength. They have lifted up the heels against us. They have weaponry 
against us, Most High. Many of us don't have weapons, but Most High, they have lifted up their weapons against us. So we pray the prayer that as the fire burneth the wood and as the flame set up the mountain on fire, so persecute them with thy tempest. And make them afraid with thy storm. Come through, Most High. Come through. Come through with the mighty wind. Come through, Lord, and tear up their communities. Come through and deliver us. You think we can't pray a prayer to our our God, Yahweh, our power, to put a cease and an end to the enemies that's trying to destroy us? And in other cases, in the book of Esther and many other places, the Most High gave them the power to fight against them, fight for their lives against these vicious enemies of Yahweh. Why do evil want to persecute you and think that you don't have the power to pray the most high vengeance upon them? That's all we got. That's all he's all we have. We're gonna use all our strength and power in prayer to pray against our enemies of the heathen nations. So verse 15 again here, just tuning in, Psalms 83, verse 15. So persecute them with thy tempest and make them afraid with thy storm. You send a storm. You send a storm that you can't recover from to the heathen nations. You send a storm you won't be able to recover from. You send a fire that will burn through the forest and spread, make it alive and keep spreading. Fill their faces with shame. Bring shame to our enemies, Lord. Bring shame to the enemies of your hidden ones. Bring shame to them that they talked about us and slandered us and came up against us and confederacy against us and consulted one another with an angry gathering against your people. Bring shame to them. Let them be ashamed. Let them be ashamed that they may seek thy name, O Lord, that they'll seek the Lord and know these are his hidden ones. Let them be confounded and troubled forever. Let them be confounded and troubled forever. Bring delusion, delusion to their mind. Let them lose their mind. Let them be confused. Overthrow them. Prayers against our enemies and these heathen nations. The Lord told us to pray for the land of our captivity. I'm sure that includes those that are willing to support and do right in the land of our captivity. Pray. We got to pray. In our prayer, we pray. We pray for the, for the land. While we're in this land of our captivity, for this land of our captivity, that a righteous judge where the most high will arise. Because the Bible says that when a wicked ruler are, are ruling in the land, the, the land mourneth, the people mourn. But when there's a righteous ruler, the people rejoice. There's a difference. So if you want to stay wicked, you stay wicked. We're going to mourn and pray. We're going to mourn and pray. Pray, pray, pray while we mourning in this wicked land. The Bible says that the Lord will hear the prayers of the poor, the prayers of the contrite in the heart. He will hear and judge the wicked. Everything is in the spirit. That's why we're the hidden ones. And our powers are the Lord in prayer. That's the pipeline. Prayer is our pipeline. We have to pray, saints, to the Hebrew Israelites. We have to pray. You have to pray without ceasing in this land of captivity. You pray without ceasing. You mean business. You mean business in the spirit with the most high in the land of our captivity. You don't play with your soul. You don't play in the land of our captivity. You pray, saints, against these heathens. Pray. And preach the word, teach the word. Our Hebrew brothers, they're out there preaching the word. We pray for them. They're on this corner. They're on the streets. In the open, open warfare. They're in open warfare, taking the word to the streets. Not behind a pulpit. 
to wake us up dead on the streets. So we pray for them. We pray. Pray for ourselves as wives. All of the wives that have Hebrew men that are on the front line. We pray. Consecrate ourselves. Make supplication. We make supplication in our heart. The words of our mouth. The meditation of our heart. We bring it down to the most high. You pray. Let them be confounded and troubled forever. Yea, let them be put to shame and perish. Telling us what to pray for the heathen that won't submit themselves to the Most High. You pray that they perish. You pray against your enemies. You don't pray against the heathens in this nation. They'll take over you. You see, when you make your prayers and supplication to the Lord, as David said, I prayed unto the Most High. I prayed, I called on his name. I afflicted myself in pray. I humbled myself in pray. Because when the, the Most High hear the prayers of the afflicted, he moves. So what your enemy thought they could do, they can't do. And what they thought they did to you, it didn't work. They can't stop you. They can't stop our nation because we continue to multiply. And there are many of us going to be obedient to the Lord. We always going to be obedient to the Lord. The apostles were faithful to the Lord. Esther was faithful to the Lord. That's why she said, if I perish, I perish. I'm going to see the king because I'm going to save my people. I'm going to save my people. I'm going to wake up my people. If I perish, I perish. A decree went out to destroy the Most High's people, the Jews. A decree has always gone out to destroy the Most High's Jews, the Jews. We the Jews. We the real Jews. We the Hebrews. A decree has gone out. So if I perish, I perish. But I'm going to see the king. I'm going to lift up my voice like a trumpet, show my people the house of Jacob their transgression so that they can get back to obeying the law, statutes, and commandments. I'm just one that the Most High raised up as a woman. I'm just that woman. Take it up with the Lord. Why he call me? Why he call Deborah? Why he call Esther? Why he call you if he calling you? Why he call you as a woman? Why he put it in you? You got to do what the Most High called you to do. Because we got to save much alive. We got to save our nation. And we are in the last days. We're in the last days. We're in Jacob's trouble. We're in Jacob's trouble. Jacob. Wake up, Jacob. We're in Jacob's trouble. Whether it's the beginning, the middle, or the end, we're in Jacob's trouble. This is real. And there has been a decree, as we read, always been a decree against the most hit, the most highest hidden war of Jacob. And the most high has given us the understanding how we ought to handle the enemies against our nation. Verse 18 says that men may know that thou whose name is Yahweh, Jehovah Yahweh, are the most high over the, all the earth. Yahweh, Yahweh. Now, this scripture says Jehovah. But we get back to the original name of our God, name of our power is Yahweh. We got to get back to the original name of the Hebrew. We got to call him by his Hebrew name. We have to always call him by his Hebrew name. We want to get away from these names that the heathen gave us in the English text. That's all we knew, though. But now the Most High is giving us strength and bringing us up to understand who he really is. Now we're getting back to our original heritage. So we call him by his original name so we can get all of the power in the earth. In the earth. 
Now, I want to say something. The, the higher you go in the most high, as the scripture says, too much is given, much is required. Too much is given, much is required. There are going to be some things that may try to come and shake you and happen to you or or perhaps try to make you look ashamed. But you got to take it in stride. Take it all in stride, knowing that it's a part of the plan that the enemy want to wreak havoc. Some things the most high allow, but it don't move you. It's part of the plan. It's part of the plan. And those, whatever is not a part of the plan, trust me, is not even going to come to fruition. Mm-mm. Uh-uh. It's not going to come to fruition at all. But whatever is a part of his plan, there's going to be some shame for his glory. The most high creates shame for his glory. You don't understand that part. A lot of people don't understand that. He will give you he'll give the shame out there for the leaders to talk about, but it ain't going to move nothing in the kingdom. It's just going to fortify. His power, his spirit, because he got to go forth. He got to shine some light somewhere to get his glory. So he allows some shame to come. So he can get his glory, see what's going on. People always want to know and see what's going on. It's always been like that. So he gives you something to see. He gives you something to hear because he wants you to understand. He wants you to see. Take note. Take note. If you have any wisdom, you'll take note. Take note of what the Lord is saying. Take note of what the Lord is doing. Be among the wise. Let's look in Psalm 16. Psalm chapter 16. Let's look at verse 4. Mm -hmm. 16. And time to give us a heavy yoke to bear. You know what? I tell you what it's called. Like Paul said, a messenger from Satan to buffer me. A messenger from Satan to buffer me. What does that mean? Something that keeps you humble for the glory of the Most High, so that we don't take His glory as human beings. He'll send something. He'll send some shame for His glory. He has sent a messenger from Satan to buffet us, a thorn in the flesh, but it ain't going to stop his power. They give you the power to go forth more. Paul had to do the work of the Lord with that thorn. Paul had to still go on and play, trailblaze this gospel for the will of the Lord, for the glory of the Most High. Psalm 16 Let's look at, make sure I got this right. And we want to look in, let's just start in, um, let's start in verse, let's just start in verse one. Preserve me, O God, for indeed do I put my trust, all of it. And it says, verse 2, O my soul, thou hast said unto the Lord, thou art my Lord. My goodness extendeth not to thee, but to the saints that are in the earth, and to the excellent in whom is all my delight. This is the hidden ones. The hidden ones of the Lord. You go, let's look down at verse 5. The Lord is the portion of my inheritance and of my cup. Thou maintainest my lot. See, the Lord maintains our lot because we're unmovable in the Lord. We're unmovable in the Lord. We want to go to another scripture here as well. And this is what we're saying, you know, even with the glory of shame or whatever the Most High is doing in our life, the messenger of Satan that comes to buffet us, he maintains our lot when we're unmovable. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
So let's go to, I'm going to go to another scripture here. And let's thank you all for tuning in. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Okay, so let's look at a scripture here in Psalms 58 and 3. Psalms 58 and 3. You're talking about the hidden one. Because God is our defense. He's the defense for the righteous. He's our defense. Because let's look here in Psalm 58 and 3 says, The wicked are, are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. Their poison is like the poison of a serpent. They are like the death adder that stoppeth her ear. You need to be very careful of trusting the wicked enemies in these heathen nations. This is what the gospel and the teachings and edification is coming for, coming forth for our Hebrew Israelite nation. Because before we were enlightened and woke to the to the truth of who we are, we just probably trusted a lot of people around our lives. Those that befriended us in these heathen nations, there's nothing good that they have in their heart towards us that, you know, is righteous. Everything has to benefit them or what they're after. Unless they are in these scriptures like we are and understand who we are and submit themselves to the Most High, there is nothing good that they can offer you. So we pray that the Most High allow the people that are cleaving to the house of Jacob to come into the full knowledge and understanding of who we are as Hebrew Israelites. They want to put us on the uh, poverty list or hate group. Why? Why do that? Who's been, who's been doing all the killing? Who's been doing all the killing all these years? Who has been doing all the killing all these years against our nation? So you have the ability to put us on a hate group. And your nation, heathen nation, has been the one that has been committing atrocities against our nation. That doesn't make sense. Who's going to believe that? You have, Satan has almost fooled the whole world about laboring uh, our nation as violent. I'm a Hebrew Israelite. I don't promote violence. I promote the scriptures to pray for the most high vengeance upon heathen. That's what I do. And whatever the most high do after that and whatever he say and whatever he command after that, that's on him because he is the most high forever. I pray the scriptures against the heathen nation. Hebrew Israelites are not a violent nation. Uh, a nation. We are not. We are not a hate group. We are nations. The Most High is waking us up. Call it what you want. He's waking us up. So they got us at, you know, as a hate group. But you don't have the KKK as a hate group. This is ridiculous. Maybe you do now after so many laws, and I don't know, where they went to the Supreme Court to pass as a hate group. This is, you know, that's why this is the land of our captivity. We are not fools. Then you have these passive coons in our nation, in our Hebrew Israelite nation, in Christianity, passive coons that want to side with the enemy, paint a picture like they don't have hate. But when they get sick of you, they're going to throw you under the bus on your job. They'll fire you whenever they want. Cut you down whenever they want. They're not in this word. Even in Christianity, it's mixed congregation. Pastor just getting money from you. You say something that you don't agree with with him and you hold fast to it, they'll show you who we are. They'll show you. But their poison is like <clears throat> excuse me, their poison is like the poison of a serpent. They are like the death adder. That stoppeth her ear, which would not hearken to the voice of a charmer, charming never so wisely. Break their teeth, O God, O, o Yahweh, in their mouth. Break out the great teeth of the young lions 
Oh, Lord. Who is the most High talking to? He's talking to all of these heathen nations that has made a tumult, an angry gathering against us. Let them melt away as waters was run continually. When he bendeth his bow to shoot his arrows, let them be as cut in pieces. Mm hmm. Yeah. The Most High's word. You have to ask the Most High about this. Because this is talking about delivering us from our enemies. And praise for the mercy of the Lord for delivering us from our enemies. Well, everybody wanted us to be in Christianity and be blind that we can't pray and speak this truth against our enemies in this nation. But our nation is waking up. As the snail was melted, let every one of them pass away like the untimely birth of a woman, that they may not see the sun. See, before your pots can feel the thorns, he should take them away as with the whirlwind, both living and in his wrath. The righteous shall rejoice when he seeth the vengeance. He shall wash his feet in the blood of the wicked. Uh-huh. This is the most high. Take it up with the most high. We the hear the ones he gave us this word. The most high gave us this word to understand what he will do to our enemies, to Israel enemies. Back off from the Hebrew Israelites. Back off from Israel. Back off from our nation, so-called black people. Back off. Because you don't even treat us the way you do. You don't even treat the so-called Native American and Latinos the way you do us. Now, of course, uh, you know, in history past, yeah, you did the Native Americans really real bad. You wiped out a lot of them. The smallpox and with the sword, all of that. It's just in your nature. The man of the field, your man of blood. But you got to have some kind of common sense to know that there's a powerful God, there's a powerful divine God in the heavens that's looked down upon his people and answers their prayers, and he's coming because of the prophecies that set forth in scriptures to do away with what you're doing. It's the time that he's doing it, and he's raising up people to wake up our people to remind them. Mm-hmm. He's waking up our nation. All of this injustice and stuff you're doing is not going to go on. And many of the people out there, the wicked, they want to, they think it's a joke. That's why you get these judges going to jail now. You get these police officers going to jail now because the Most High is setting up righteous judgment. Some of these judges are making right decisions to put them, in, put them behind bars. Most High putting it in their heart because the scripture says the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord, and he turns it whatsoever way he will. So you mean to tell me the, king, the judge, the king, is not going to do what the Most High put in his heart? Oh, well, he's going to do what the Most High put in his heart. So that's why you see justice prevailing in the judiciary system when it comes down to these wicked heathen nations trying to get away with what they're doing against our nation. The Most High is putting an end to it. He's bringing it to an end. He's bringing it to an end. He's raising up people to put this word out here, put the word out. See, the word brings the spirit, the power of the living God. The word brings spirit. The word brings down the power of prayer and the spirit using our word. That's why the scripture says death and life is in the power of the tongue. And those that eat it, you live by it. Life or death. You got to speak life. We have to speak life in this earth to our nation, our Hebrew men, our Hebrew sisters that's out in the world, still cleaving, still out there mingling with the heathen nations, hating their own nation. A lot of our nation hate each other. They hate each other. Coons don't know no better yet. All of us have been to a certain place of that before we come into the understanding. Some to some degree and some to other degrees, especially if someone trespasses you. But the scripture tells us in our nation, Hebrew nation, that we are not to hate one another. 
Don't hate the ones in our own nation that trespass us. Forgive them. Forgive the people in our nation. Forgive them. Forgive our Hebrew nation that do us wrong. We can't hold grudges and be mad and hate them. We have to love each other. That's why he said, love your neighbor as you love yourself. It's two great commandments, loving the most high with all our heart, soul, mind, strength, and might. And the second one is like unto it, love our neighbors as we love ourselves. Our neighbors are who are in our Hebrew nation. We see our people walking past us. We got to greet them, love them. If they did something wrong to us, correct them. Correct them. They did something wrong to you, correct them. But don't hate them. Don't hate them. And the Bible do say, don't abhor Edomite. Don't abhor Edomite. So that doesn't mean we hate Esau, hate the Edomites. But we deal with you as the Most High tell us to deal with you and despise your wickedness, despise your evilness. We despise it. But the Most High hates you, but he didn't tell us to hate you. But the scripture says, hate what God hates and love what he loves. So we got to balance that out because, we, you know, you hate something. That's why he tells us to hate evil. So we hate the evil. We hate the evil that you do, evil of the heathen nation. That's what the scripture says. Let's get that real quick. Got to hate evil. You always have to hate evil. You never feel that you want to side with evil. Never side with evil. Mm -mm. You, you who love the Lord, hate evil. Psalms 97 and 10. Psalms 97 and 10. You who love the Lord, hate evil. Mm -hmm. To make sure we finish here. So let's go to the last verse in Psalms chapter 58, verse 11 says, So that a man shall say, Verily, there is a reward for the righteous. Verily, he is a God that judges the earth. That's what we can say. When we see the vengeance of the Most High upon our enemies, as verse 10 said, the righteous shall rejoice when he seeth the vengeance. He shall wash his feet in the blood of the wicked. The same thing Yahweh shall say, he's going to, he come to, uh, in the wine press. Let's look, let's look at that. We got to look at that scripture. The Most High is speaking vengeance upon his enemies. It's in this nation. The people don't believe it because they don't see it. Everything is just the same. Nothing has happened. God will snatch, snatch the life out of a person in one minute. Seconds, he blinks his eyes. In one hour, he will move. Yes. Mm-hmm. He's just that type of God. It's time for us to arrive. You should be glad. He the nation should be glad for us to arrive. You should be glad this is our time. You should be glad that the Most High is coming to deliver our nation. You should be glad. If you wicked, you ain't glad. That's expected. Those that are trying to cleave to the house of Jacob, you should be glad. Enemies want us to be afraid of them. You don't have to be afraid of anybody in this earth. The Bible says we ought to fear God rather than man. Man might can kill the body, but they, the Most High got the power to kill the body and cast both body and soul into hell. Eternal punishment. When when the righteous, uh, are in the, when we pass away, we have, uh, the Bible says, sweet is the death of his saints. No, it's no harm. You don't do anything. You don't, you know, there are martyrs in the kingdom, martyrs that have gone on, martyrs that have lived his life and taught his word, and the enemies, the wicked enemies, couldn't stand it, so they want to get rid of them. The apostles, all of the apostles except for John the Revelator, all of the apostles. There's death, there's pain after death for the wicked, pain after death for the wicked. But the righteous, 
we are with the Lord. To be absent in body is to be present with the Lord. So, but there is an evil in the world. So that's why our prayers are important. And being steadfast in this word, walking in the spirit, ready to face whatever. Isaiah chapter 63, verse 3 says, I have trodden the wine press alone, and of the people there was none with me. I will tread them in my anger and trample them in my fury, and their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garment, and I will stain all my remnant, my raiment, excuse me, my raiment. But see, you have to know who the scripture is talking to. You have to know this. So we go to verse 1, Isaiah 63 and 1. It's going to have to, to, to start at the beginning. Isaiah 63 and 1. We want to start at the beginning. It says, Who is this that comes cometh from, from Edom? Who is this that comes from Edom? Edom? From the Caucasus Mountain? Edom? From Seir? Edom from Petra, Edom, the Edomites, Edom. This is Edom the Most High is talking to. Most High has seen what every nation have done. The Most High know what's in every nation of people. Most High deal with nations of people. He already know you. He already know you. He already see you. This is Edom. Who is this that comes from Edom with dyed garments? From Bajra. See, he came from Edom with dyed garments from Bajra, blood on it. He stained it. This is prophecy. This that is glorious in his apparel. Mm-hmm. That's Yahusha. Traveling in the greatness of his strength. The greatness of the strength of his power. He said, I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. Verse 2, wherefore art thou red in thy apparel, and thy garments like him that treadeth in the wine fat. Yeah, but like it's treaded in the wine fat because you, you tread wine with your feet back, you know. In ancient days, they took the shoes off and tread the wine, smashing the grapes to, you know, become wine. And it's popping everywhere, blood. But this is talking about blood. I have trodden the wine press alone. People there was none with me. He did it by himself. He's not going to need us in certain aspects to tread his wine press of his vengeance, of his anger against Edom and all of the heathen that has came up against his people. This is the day of vengeance that the Most High is going to do himself. Let's read verse 3 again. I have trodden the winepress alone, and of the people there was none with me. I will tread them in my anger and trample them in my fury. Because mm-hmm. he's mad. You keep, you see the nations keep offending the most high's hidden ones. We are the hidden ones, and we just see pretty much every day on the news, people are offending the Most High is hidden one. As Pharaoh, Moses went to Pharaoh, and the Most High said, let my people go. See, and we don't know how the Most High is going to do this. See? We don't know how he's going to trample them. We don't know how he's going to tread them, and he said, for I will tread them in my anger. We don't know how that's going to happen. America don't really know how this is going to happen. You're going to lose the, the most high people. You don't know how this is going to happen. You don't know what the other nations are conjuring up for you while you're thinking you know them. In peace, peace, you don't know what the most high is going to do. You don't know what the most high is going to do to the leaders of these heathen nations. You don't know how the most high as an individual is going to start wiping them out. For I will tread them in my anger and trample them in my fury, and their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garment. That's the wine press, his blood. Their blood 
That's the, the it's going to be sp- sprinkled upon his garment. The heathen blood, the the the. The Edomite's blood, however that come, and I will stain all my raiment. Mm-hmm. All of his garments is going to be stained. Verse four says, "For the day of vengeance is in my heart." You dealing with the Most High, Yahweh, the Power, the Ruler of the Earth, the One that made you and I. He created all of us. From Adam come we all. From Adam come we all. And from Adam come we all, but that scripture in Second Ezra chapter six verse fifty four through fifty nine is saying that we are His special people. As for these other people, they are nothing. If you want to become something with the Lord, you need to do right. Ask Him as a Gentile, a heathen Gentile, because there's a difference. Put it in your, give you the law, give you the law in your heart to do right. Because if not, you will be trampled. For the day of his vengeance is in my heart. The day of vengeance is in my heart, he says. And the year of my redeemed is come. We are the redeemed of the Lord. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Those that he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy. We are the redeemed. We're waiting for our redemption. But he says, come. My redemption has drawn nigh. He's come. He's come. This is the most high. This is the spirit of the living God. This is his words. That's active, powerful, and alive, sharper than any two-edged sword. This is the day of the Lord. That's what people are just dropping like flies from this plague that has been released. That's part of it. We don't know uh, the other ways the Most High is going to bring, bring his vengeance blow upon the enemies of Israel and Judah. We don't know, but it's here because he just said it here in verse 4. Just now tuning in, Isaiah chapter 63, verse 4 again, for the day of vengeance is in my heart and the year of my redeemed, my redeemed. Who's the redeemed? We are the redeemed. The hidden one has it's come, it's come. He said in verse 5, and I looked and there was none to help and wondered that there was none to uphold. Therefore, my own arm brought salvation unto me and my fury upheld me. Anger. Why? Because there's no atonement for these heathen nations. That's why the Hebrew Israelites, those of us that are redeemed by the blood of Yahweh, we have atonement for our sins. The heathens have no blood to atone for their sins. There's no blood to sacrifice to appease the anger of the Most High. There's no blood there. So his fury is just being poured out. Verse 6 says, I will tread down the people in my anger and make them drunk in my fury, and I will bring down their strength to the earth. Mm -hmm. The strength that they they have and what they're doing to the Hebrew Israelites and the nation of Israel. See, when you have people in bondage, they have a strength. They, they, that's a strength that they have. That's why David prayed the prayer, uh, deliver me from my enemies that are too strong for me. Have to, have to admit, in areas of our lives here in this land of captivity, where Satan has uh, influenced the minds of the wicked. What does Satan mean to deceive? The deceivers. The deceivers, when you go to the municipal building to take care of your your business, the deceivers in the White House, the deceivers in the Capitol, the deceivers in the police uh, department, the deceivers in the heathen nation, deceivers, the coons or the deceivers in our nation that side with the deceivers. They are part of the plan of Satan. Deceivers. That's what Satan means, to deceive. So he's in people deceiving. Now this is what he says to Israel. Verse 7, I will mention the loving kindness of the Lord and the praise of the Lord according to all that the Lord has bestowed on us and the great goodness toward the house of Israel, which he has bestowed on them according to his mercy. 
according to the multitude of his loving kindness. For he says, surely they are my people, children that will not lie. So he was their savior. In all their affliction, he was afflicted. Most high, and how was afflicted with us? He was afflicted with us. Then how much I took on our burden. He took on our affliction. When he bore our sins on the cross, not just our sins, but he bore our affliction. He bore our burden. Because he knew. He was afflicted by men when he walked the earth. He did his ministry for the three years. He he was he he know what we went through. He felt the persecution. He felt it. So he bore our affliction. In the affliction he was afflicted, and the angel of his presence saved them. In his love and in his pity, he redeemed them, and he bare them and carried them all the days of their lives. All the all the days of old, he carried and bare the affliction of the Hebrew Israelites, so-called black people. He bore our affliction. He's still bearing our affliction. That's why he confused the enemy about our nation. But see, this is what we're trying to tell our nation to wake up. But with, but they rebel and vex his Holy Spirit. Therefore, he was turned to be their enemy and fought against them. You see? That's why we have to be obedient. Then he remembered the days of old, Moses and his people saying, where is he that brought them up out of the sea with the shepherd, with the shepherd of his flock? Where is he that put his Holy Spirit within them? that led them by the right hand of Moses with his glorious arm dividing the water before them to make himself an everlasting name Mm -hmm. that led them through the deep as a horse in the wilderness that they should not stumble. We'll stop right there. Mm -hmm. We'll stop right there and keep reading. But you see how much time we got. Maybe I can finish it up and don't have to do a part two. I got a few more minutes. I think it went over, but I have those minutes up there. So all praise to the most high. Thank you for your patience. Now, I won't go to, I, I want to go to where um, Herod, of course, you know, made a decree and put a, You know, uh, I don't know what I want to say. You know, he put a mark on Yahushai for his life. And the Most High had to tell Joseph, minister him in a dream, and told him to get up and take the child, Yahushai, to Egypt. Had to hide him. Yahushai was the hidden one of the hidden one. Because he had to be hid. Yahushua had to be here. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 12, verse 17, talks about how the adversary seeks to slay us. And before I get on, we're going to go to these scriptures, and then we'll go to the story of Joseph and close out there. We're going to close out there because what we want to do is show you how not only are we the hidden ones, but our Savior was the hidden one because he had to be hid. Our Lord and Savior, Yahweh, had to be hid from the enemy. And so this is why the Most High has given us his word. This Bible was written for us. We, You know, everybody want to take this Bible to the Bible written for everyone. No, it was not. I'm learning that and understanding that. Coming into my Hebrew heritage, I'm understanding that. 
because the Most High had to send his Bible, this word for the hidden one, to help us see what he has done uh, for our ancestors, you know, the patriarchs of old, how he gave them faith to hold on and trust him. Now, Ecclesiastes chapter 12, Ecclesiasticus in the Apocrypha, chapter 12, verse 17 says, If adversity come upon thee, thou shalt find him there first. So it's telling us when we're going through adversity, who's going to be the first one there to offer help? It's going to be the adversary. It's going to be a heathen nation acting like they want to help you, you know. And though he pretend to help thee, yet shall he undermine thee. So that's why we have to be careful with the heathen nations that, you know, don't have the spirit of the Lord. Mm -hmm. He shall shake his head and clap his hand and whisper much and change his countenance. Yeah, because he got evil in him planting something in his own mind. Mm -hmm. That's what they does. I want to stop right there. Because that just gave us the understanding how we are not to never trust our enemy. Now we we feel in the apocrypha, and I want to go to Second Ezra. We have to be able to wake up. We gotta wake up. Gotta wake up, Jacob. And I, I really thank the Most High for my husband. All praise to the Most High for my husband, double honor, being an elder, and to all of the elders out there that are spreading the word and giving us the truth. And truth costs you something, you know. Truth costs something. You know, you're going to go through it because you're getting the truth. This is a spiritual warfare that we're in in the spirit, you know, where we, the, the, the adversary, the devil, he wants to snatch our souls and sift us like wheat. So anybody that's out there... Um, teaching the truth, speaking the truth, introducing you to the truth, you need to pray for them. You have a Hebrew husband, pray for your Hebrew husband. Pray for your elders in the Hebrew nation that's teaching you the truth about who we are. They deserve double honor because truth costs us something. It's cost them something. It, it has cost those that has taught us and brought us into the truth and understanding of who we are and what the Most High is saying about us and helping us to understand who our enemies are in some type of affliction, persecution. But we got to be strong and have keep the faith, fight the good fight of faith to the end and lay hold unto eternal life. Second Ezra chapter 9, verse Twenty, and I think I did a whole teaching on this. So I considered the world, and behold, there was peril because of the devices that were come into it. Peril, destruction, devastation, atrocities. Let's go to Psalms thirty-seven, thirty-two. And uh, really hasten up here. You don't have to do a part two. You won't do it. Um. Thirty-seven division of Psalm. Let's talk about the right one. Verse thirty-two. Okay. The wicked watches the righteous and seeketh to slay him. Verse thirty-three. The Lord will not leave him in his hand, nor condemn him when he is judged. The wicked watches the righteous and seeketh to slay him. Mm -hmm. You don't have wisdom. You don't know who you are. You're not woke up to this truth. You're hanging around with the heathen and wicked nation. That's what they desire to do because that's in their blood. They're men of the field. Esau was a man of the field going around hunting blood. This is some heavy truth here. And we can't hold back the truth because we got to save our nation. You can't let the devil fool you. Got to wake up to the righteous statues. As verse 31, if you look here, we still in 
um, the 37th Division of Psalm, verse 31, says the law of God is in his heart. None of his steps shall slide. You got to keep the, Lord, the law of the Lord in our heart so that our steps won't slide. Because in this wicked nation, with all of the injustice going on, Satan will try to get your slip foot to slide. So we got to wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord in verse 34 and keep his way and he shall exalt thee to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, thou shalt see it. Thou shalt see when the wicked are, when they cut off. Verse 35 says, I have seen the wicked in great power. Yeah, look like that, the eagle. Look at America, the eagle. Spreading himself like a green bay tree. Yet he passes away. And lo, he was not. Yea, I sought him, but he could not be found. This is the day of the wicked, those that are troubling our nation, those that are troubling you personally. They're not going to be found one day because the Most High know how to bring a sore disease upon them. The heathens that's troubling our nation. It says, mark the perfect man. Behold the upright, for the end of that man is peace. The perfect man. They're not going out here bothering these heathen nations. You're not provoking these heathen nations. You're not up in their face or trying to do wicked to them. None of our nation has really retaliated like that against the heathens that come up upon us. As strong as our nation is, as strong as our Hebrew men and women are, you know, we don't we don't attack them. We have never attacked them. There's something about that because there's places where the Most High says, you know, avenge not ourselves that, you know, he will avenge. Take not avenge or in our own hands. Leave room for his wrath. When you leave room for the Most High wrath, he can do it. He can do it. Now, we say and teach the word and say what he tells us to do, but as far as avenging ourselves, we don't avenge ourselves because we already know what evil wickedness we're dealing with. So he said, mark the perfect man, and behold, the upright for the end, and that man is peace. But the transgressors shall be destroyed together. The end of the wicked shall be cut off. We don't want to be destroyed with the wicked. Salvation, But the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. He is their strength in time of trouble. Yes, he is. We praise him for that. He's our salvation, our anchor of hope. And the Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him. All our help come from the Lord. All of our help come from the Lord. Mm -hmm. All of our help come from the Lord. Let's hurry up here. Got just a few more verses, and then we're going to be finished. We're going to conclude the broadcast. Let's go to Ecclesiasticus in the Apocrypha. And... um, Let's go to verse 13. This is giving us warning, giving us warning. Separate thyself from thy enemies and take heed of thy friends. The Lord has given us a warning to separate ourselves from our enemies because your enemy is waiting to slay you some kind of way. Even if it may not be a physical slay, they're still waiting to slay you with their words, with their defamation of character, um, or to assassinate your character. They're waiting. That's all they got is wickedness. What can you? A good tree can't bring forth corrupt fruit, and a corrupt tree. Let me say this again. A good tree cannot bring forth corrupt fruit. And a corrupt tree cannot bring forth good fruit. So what are you expecting from corruption? What are you expecting from a corrupt fruit? What are you expecting from those that are the wicked or estranged from the womb? What do you, what are you expect? What are we expecting? Only thing we can do is wake up our people. That's the only thing we can do to enlighten them who the wicked who are the wicked in their lives. To be on guard, even your friend. Take heed of thy friend. It could be, your friend could be a coon. Your friend can be a disobedient coon. Let's 
Let's go to Proverbs chapter 5, verse 21. And we're getting down to the last minutes of the broadcast. Proverbs chapter 5. Verse 21. For the ways of man are before the eyes of the Lord, and he pondereth all his going. Mm-hmm. All of men's ways are before the Lord. And he ponders their going. He know, he know when you lie down, when you rise up, when you go in, when you come out. The Most High know. Mhm. His own iniquities shall take the wicked himself, and he shall be holden with the cords of his sins. Yeah. Be sure to know your sins will find you out. Your own sins will find you out. He shall die without instruction. And in the greatness of his folly, he shall go astray. Doing what you want to do, anything. It's going to be your own downfall. That's what the Most High said. Now, in Revelation chapter 12, verse 17, we see how the re- the dragon made war and was warf with the woman, the woman that carried the seed. That is a powerful... Uh, subject here because scriptures in the Bible because the seed of the woman is always that seed is the seed of you know Yahushua, his spirit with the woman the dragon persecution of the woman if you go to uh, Revelation chapter 12 let's look at verse 17 and the dragon was walked with the woman and went to make war with the women of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Yahweh Christ. Now, we're talking about the hidden ones. So we see again here that the, the seed of the woman was the hidden one. We've got to go another fur, a little further here in these verses. All right, let's go to verse 14. Revelation chapter 12, verse 14 says, And the woman and the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness and to her place where she is nourished for a time and times and half time on the face of the serpent. You see, because he was after her seed. Still talking about the Hebrew Israelites from the dragon, from the dragon. And that's why he's making war. He's looking verse 12 because he knows he has but a short time. So this wicked, evil, evilness, in the world from Satan has always wanted to make war against the seed of the house of Jacob, our nation. But the verse 16 says, well, let's look at verse 15. And the serpent cast out his mouth water as a flood after the woman. Be after us too, after the woman, you see, spirit, that he might cause her to, be carried away of the flood, trying to kill her. And the earth helped the woman. And the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out his mouth. You see, this is all the most high helping us because she had the seed. Beautiful because see, Yahweh is this seed that um, the dragon is making war with because the seed doesn't want us to be redeemed. Doesn't want us to have eternal life. All right, we go to one more scripture and we'll just conclude the broadcast right here. Um, so we can make sure we stay on track and understanding. Uh, that we are the hidden ones. Mhm. And 
Thank you all for tuning in. Let's check on and see how many more minutes we have here. Okay, we're doing pretty good. I think I can get it all in within 20 minutes. All right, so we want to be able to go um, to the book of Matthew. Okay. And we just give the most high all the praise and honor and the glory for his word, giving us the understanding of spirit to even go through his scriptures. Um, The word is holy. We want to be careful how we handle the word and make sure we're speaking what he's telling us to say. So it's always good. You study to show yourself approved unto the Lord. Study the scriptures for yourself as well. All right, let's look in verse 13, and we just want to kind of like jump right into it for the sake of time. And it says here, We're going to jump right into it. Verse 12, Matthew chapter 2, verse 12. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, Herod, they departed into their own country another way. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, take the young child and his mother and flee to Egypt. And be thou there until I will bring the word. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. Mm -hmm. Verse 15 says, when he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed to Egypt, into Egypt. Okay. So let's stop right there for a minute and just talk about that. Because first of all, that's how the Most High deal with his children, Hebrew Israelites, the spirit, through the spirit. And we have to be in tune to the spirit. We have to be righteous enough to hear the spirit. And he gave him this warning through a dream. Because, see, the Most High is everywhere at all times. He knows and sees everything. He knows when someone is plotting against you. Um, If it's not your time, that cannot come to pass. Because the scriptures say he binds the hands of the crafty that they cannot perform their enterprise, the evil of their enterprise or what they want to do for their own evil, wicked intentions and inventions. That's why we are under the mercy, the goodness, and the power of the Most High. So we don't need anything else or anybody else in our lives when it comes down to um, hearing him have to hear him for yourself and your family and those that are connected for you. We have to hear him and stay in the holy way because if the Lord has got a plan for you, he's not going to authorize anything against you, you know, and we just give him the praise and honor the glory for that because here we look in these scriptures, he being, being warned of God in a dream for the most high speaks to us in dreams. I've had that experience on several times, several occasions, where the Most High speaks to us in dreams. You'll know it's him. You'll know whether the dream is of your own flesh because you ate something that night, or you'll know when the Holy Spirit speaks to you by his power, by his presence. It's a difference. It's a difference. It stays with, it stays with you, and you know you can hear the Most High. So Joseph heard the spirit of the Lord being warned of God in a dream that he should not return to heaven. They should go into their own country another way. Mm -hmm. And um, because, first of all, you know, the Most High is just a God of wisdom. He knows. So Joseph obeyed and, you know, arose and took. Yahweh to Egypt until Herod really was dead. But let's keep reading until verse 15. It says, and, and there and was there until the death of, of Herod, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, out of Egypt I have called my son. Mm-hmm. Most high call Yahweh out of Egypt, just like he called us out of Egypt, just like he called our ancestors out of Egypt. See, the Most High is for the Hebrews. Yahweh is a black man. So he's for us and died for our nation, so-called black man, let's say like that, Yahweh Shah. 
He's our nation. He's Hebrew. So he died for us because he already know the things that we constantly go through in this world. Because the Most High created two, two things, two, two kinds of people. Let me say it like that, not things. Two kinds of people, the wicked and the righteous. And we're going to read a scripture in Proverbs. That's what I meant to go to, um, 16 and 4. We can get that real quick. I think we we can go there real quick because he he does these things. He used the instrument of evil for his own purpose. He's always done that. Mm-hmm. That's what they're there for. But they can't perform their enterprise unless he authorizes it. So they can try, 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 but... Unless the Lord authorized something, it's not going to happen. The Lord has made all things for himself, yea, even the wicked for the day of evil. But you see here, when the Most High have a divine plan for someone's life, he moves them and hides them. We're the hidden ones that he speaks to us, show us where to go, what to do. We're the hidden ones of the Most High. We're the hidden ones of the scriptures and Psalms. 83. So let's go a little further here. He called his son. He said, latter part of verse 15, out of Egypt have I called my son. Because mm-hmm. he had a plan for him now. It was time for him to come out from Egypt and be prepared for the ministry to go through Jerusalem and make himself known. At the appropriate right time, because many times Yahweh still had to be hid. He moved through the crowd and disappeared because it wasn't yet his time. Because he was always under the attack by the enemies to take his life or to persecute him by our own people and by the heathens. You know, and during that time was the heathens of the, the, the Rome, you know. So verse 16 says, Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceedingly wroth because they wanted Yahawashah, they wanted Yahawashah to come to him, the parents to bring the baby to him. But he was mocked because he didn't get what he wanted. He was wroth and sent forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem and in all the coasts thereof from two years old and under, according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise man. So we see that Harold was wroth because he couldn't kill Yahawashai. And because he couldn't hear, kill Yahawashai, he set a decree out to have, to slew the children that were in Bethlehem. Um, that were two years old and younger, as we've read this scripture here. Let's two years old and under, according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise man. Then it was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremy the prophet, saying, In Ramah was there a voice heard, lamentation and weeping and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children and would not be confident because they were not. That's a prophecy, and that's still going on today with our nation of of our our Hebrew men being trying to be uh, killed off by the heathen. A cry is being heard in Ramah, a voice of lamentation, weeping, great mourning for our Hebrew um, families, that are experiencing um, the injustice of police brutality gunning down their families, Jacob. Jacob. Mm-hmm. The verse 19 says, But when Harold was dead, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Arise, take the young child and his mother, and go into the land of Israel, for their for they are dead which sought the young child's life. And see, that's what the Most High would do. He'd kill off the enemies 
they have a time. The enemies, the wickedness of the of people in the world have a time the most high cut off their life. You outlive the, your enemies that the most high don't have no more purpose for. See, the Lord has made all things for himself, even the wicked for the day of evil. So their time come, and it will be a swift judgment with severity and pain after death for the wicked, heathen. And verse 21 says, and he arose and took the young child and his mother and came into the land of Israel. Okay. But when he heard that Oculus, uh, uh, okay, pronounce this word. Archelaus did reign in Judea in the room of his father Herod. He was afraid to go hither. So Joseph, you know, as human beings, he had emotion and he feared a little bit. Notwithstanding being warned of God in a dream, he turned aside into the parts of Galilee. And he came and dwelt in the city called Nazareth, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophets, he shall be called a Nazarene. And that was you know, the most high didn't still tell him to go, so he went and depart to Galilee because that was a part of the prophecy for him to be called a Nazarite so that, you know, uh, he wouldn't defile himself, cut his hair, drink wine, or just having the Nazarite law being, you know, with the strict dietary laws and being called a Nazarite. So that had to come to pass. So it all worked out. It was a prophecy. You know, so he might have had fear and didn't go um, in, in, into Judea, you know, because it says here, verse 22, but when he heard that Archelaus, we're going to pronounce that right, did reign in Judea in the room of his father, he was afraid to go hither, notwithstanding being warned of God in a dream. Okay, being warned of God in the dream, he turned aside and went into the parts of God. But heard the Lord. And that is what our nation has to do. You know, we are the hidden ones, so that's where that wisdom and discernment come at, come in at as, as the chosen people of the Most High. If you want to be able to spare your life and live and uh, uh, receive the blessings of the Lord and Hear him. Hear him. You have to hear the Lord. Because we're the hidden ones. You got to know where to go. You have to know where not to go. This is this is very, very important. Because if we don't hear from the Holy Spirit and have discernment, you could be, very well be fooled by the enemy. And the Most High will not be able to get glory out your life. So let me, um, just one second here. Second here. Okay, so um, the correct way of that pronunciation of this king of her- this king is Archelaus. Archelaus. They heard that Archelaus did reign in Judea in the room of his father Herod. He was afraid to go thither, now standing being warned of God in a dream. He turned aside into the parts of Galilee. So, you know, we're going to conclude it with this because uh, I, I think the most high we was able to get through it so we can hear from the Lord and bring forth um, more edifications, got it in there. It didn't spend too much time in one place. But being the hidden one, I can conclude this message with a warning. When you're hidden, you're hidden. You're, you're, the, you're the hidden one. And you can only be hid if the Most High has hid you. And they have to come with wisdom and discernment, knowing when, where, and uh, being at the right place at the right time. Um, using wisdom with your words, your actions, 
um, coming out from among the ungenerated heathen and covering yourself in prayer and heeding to the word of the Lord and doing his will, fulfilling his plan, purpose, and receiving the promises, of course. There's promises for the, for, for the hidden ones. His plan, purposes, and promises. That's how we're able to um, fulfill his will, because there's a will he wants us to fulfill. And wake up our nation. Wake up our nation, you know. Um, there's a time, just like uh, the Most High told Joseph that it was time for him to go back into Jerusalem, Judea, that region, Um and so it was a time to come out from being hid in that way. And then the Most High gave him another place to go be hid until it was really time for Yahweh Shah to come out and be. And even, like I said before, when Yahweh Shah was on the scene, he still had to be hid in certain, <clears throat> certain aspects of, you know, going over across the sea by himself, going to the mountain with your us uh, talking to Yahweh, um, you know, departing from the disciples to be by himself. It's, it's the hidden place in the Most High, the secret place of the Most High, Psalm 91 says. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High, it's the, it's the secret place in your heart as well, communing with the Father, communing with the Father through the name of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai Christ, communing with the Father. Praying in your secret place. He said those that, you know, if you go into your secret place, he will reward you openly. It's that secret place with the most high in the spirit of prayer. Because this is a real life journey that we're in with the most high. And uh, things are changing. Things are changing. So we pray that the word of edification have been a blessing to you. And um, thank you so much for tuning in and uh, may the Most High keep you, bless you, and lift up his consonants upon you and give you peace. Until next time, thank you for tuning in to Judah Praise. Shalom.